Hello everyone. Over time, I've designed and shared many inverter projects with different power levels. However, many viewers have told me that most of them are quite complex to build and require a considerable budget. What they're looking for is a high power inverter that's both affordable and easy to assemble. That's why in today's video, I'm excited to introduce you to a simple yet powerful 220 volt inverter control module that costs just $2. Despite its minimal design, when paired with a sufficiently large transformer, it can deliver several kilowatts of output power. The output waveform is a modified sine wave, but rest assured, it works flawlessly with all types of loads. Just like always, I put my trust in JLCPCB. Their service never fails to impress me. I've provided all the necessary files for you. Just download them from the link in the video description. Simply upload them to JLCPCB's website, and in about a week, your PCB will arrive. This project is quite small, so the total cost for the PCB and shipping is only $3.50, an absolute bargain. Additionally, with the built-in 3D viewer, you can easily get a clear visual look at your PCB. Many times, I've caught mistakes on my boards just by checking them in 3D before production. And one more thing, if you sign up for a JLCPCB account now, you'll receive valuable discount codes that can help you save a significant amount on your orders. After about a week, I received my PCB. If you're in a hurry, you might consider using DHL service. It's more expensive, but the delivery speed is unbelievably fast. As always, the PCB is absolutely perfect. As you can see, this project uses a widely popular IC, the SG3525. It requires very few external components to operate. I've adjusted the dead time to reshape the SG3525 square wave into a modified sine wave. So despite being a budget-friendly project, you can confidently use it with any type of load. I've also added two pairs of totem pole drivers, D882 and B772, at the PWM output, each capable of handling up to three ace. Based on my calculations, you can drive up to 20 MOSFETs per side. With the right setup, the total power output can reach up to 5 kilowatts. Of course, you'll need a sufficiently large transformer to fully utilize this capacity. This circuit also includes overload protection. Simply connect the overload protection pin to a shunt resistor at the 220 volt output. In the event of an overload, the circuit will shut down immediately to protect the MOSFETs. Next, we'll install the power MOSFETs. For around two kilowatts of output power, you'll need two aluminum heat sinks, each about five centimeters long, and a total of eight MOSFETs, split evenly between the two sides. Here, I'm using MOSFETs rated at 140 AS and 85 volts. With these, you can run the inverter on either a 12 volt or 24 volt battery system. At 24 volts, the inverter's power output will double. Of course, higher power also requires a suitably sized transformer. For a two kilowatt inverter, the transformer should weigh around six kilograms to ensure reliable long-term operation. After securely mounting all the MOSFETs onto the aluminum heatsink, I'll use a thick copper wire to connect all the source pins together. Be sure to choose a wire gauge that matches your maximum power requirement. For example, at 1000 watts, you'll need a copper wire with a diameter of at least 2.5 millimeters. The gate pins of the MOSFETs on each side will be connected together through a 10 ohm resistor. This helps protect the MOSFET to gates and ensures they switch on and off in sync. For this circuit, we need a transformer with three output wires. If you're using a 12 volt battery, you'll need a 12 volt, zero volt, and 12 volt to 220 volts transformer. Here, I'm using a transformer salvaged from an old UPS. It has a power rating of about one kilovolt M and a primary winding voltage of around 16 volts as the UPS was designed to operate on a 24 volt system. This transformer isn't the ideal choice for today's test, but I don't have many alternatives since I switched to using pulse transformers for my projects a long time ago. 
the two 12 volt terminals of the transformer will be connected to the aluminum heat sinks, while the zero volts terminal will be connected to the positive terminal of the battery. We also need to add a capacitor of about 3300 microfappers between the positive and negative terminals of the circuit. The two PWM output pins from the control board will be connected to the two MOSFET banks. The GND pin of the control board will be connected to the battery's negative terminal, while the positive pin will be connected to the battery's positive terminal through a switch. I've also connected the output to a power meter and an outlet. And with that, we've built a simple yet incredibly powerful inverter. To power this circuit, I'll be using two power supplies connected in parallel, since each supply can only provide a maximum of 50 AS, which isn't enough on its own. The voltage is set to 14 volts. You can see that this inverter consumes around 23 watts at no load, which is an acceptable level for a DIY inverter. If you use a properly matched transformer, the no load power consumption will be slightly lower, typically under 20 watts. Testing with a 250 watt bulb, the inverter handles it effortlessly. After subtracting the no load power consumption, the conversion efficiency is around 90 cent, not bad at all. This inverter can also be used to power an electric fan. Although it's slightly noisier compared to grid power, it still runs smoothly. I've tested it multiple times and can confidently say it works well with fans. Next, I'll test the inverter with a hairdryer for a few minutes to see how much the temperature increases. The ambient temperature is around 19 degrees Celsius, and I'm not using any cooling fans for the transformer or heat sinks. As you can see, the temperature rise is minimal. The hottest part is the transformer winding, since it's made of aluminum wire with a relatively small gauge. If you use a copper wound transformer with a larger wire gauge, even at a continuous 1000 watt load, you won't need any cooling fans. I also tested it with a standard rice cooker, which consumes around 700 watts and works perfectly. You can confidently cook rice during a power outage without any issues. In summary, this is an extremely affordable inverter project. While it does have some limitations, if you're looking for a powerful, cost-effective, and durable inverter, this is a great option. Keep in mind that while the control circuit can drive up to 40 MOSFETs for a maximum output of 5 kilowatts, the actual power output heavily depends on the transformer. 
you'll need a sufficiently large transformer to achieve that capacity. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll be happy to answer them.